the transition pictures for Vincent van Gogh. Vincent van Gogh died in 1890 of a self-inflicted gunshot wound, although it wasn't the gunshot that killed him, weirdly, because it didn't touch, he missed, basically. Uh, it didn't touch any major organs, it was infection that got into the wound that killed him ultimately. He only discovered art in his 20s, I think, and he died at 37. So there was a mad rush towards the end of his life to produce as many artworks as possible. And I think, if I've got this right, he only sold two paintings in his lifetime. And uh, he was constantly poor, constantly depressed, turned to alcohol, I think. His own father thought he was a mental case and wanted to put him in a hospital. And I think the transition pictures illustrate that. I couldn't find him at first, when I was in this metaphorical cave thing that I'm always in at the beginning. Couldn't find him. But then, this massive hole opened up in the wall. Now, you know when they dig tunnels through mountains and they have those enormous drills and they drill through rock. This was like that, only the drills were on the inside. So by the time he emerged from them, he was chewed up. When he composed himself on the ground, he realized he couldn't see. He was blind. And he crawls inch by inch along the ground, panicking. The thing that led him on was a chill in the air. You know when you have big caves or big tunnels and they have a chill in them when you walk into them? That he felt on his face and he allowed it to guide him. But when he got to the tunnel, he could just hear a noise. He could hear like the, the whistle of the wind or something. As he sat there, he thought, well, that's it. I can't see, so I can't go anywhere. But it wasn't that he couldn't see. It was that he didn't want to see. The world had been too hard for him, I think. And he'd internalized his thoughts his visions. Maybe that's why his paintings were so vibrant, because he didn't see the world either the way the rest of us do, or at all. He just saw shapes and colours and, and that was it. But he'd internalised so much pain that he didn't want to look outwards anymore. But it was all self-inflicted. It was all something he'd done to himself over the years of frustration and poverty. When he did open his eyes, he looked up the tunnel, and there was a pull, as there always is, there was a suction feel to this, and he resisted. Not going. Too despondent to move. But you can't ignore the momentum. You don't have a choice in this. And the pull of it dragged him over off this little rock he was sitting on, dragged him over and started pulling him along. And it scraped off bits of skin as he, as he I mean, you know, metaphorically, um, bits of skin as he was dragged up the rock. And the feeling was, it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to be in pain. You don't have to suffer. You could choose to let go, to surrender, and be without the pain. It doesn't have to hurt. There was something about this message got through to him, I think, because I did feel him just release the tension and go, oh, whatever, all right, that's fine. And as he did so, it was like he turned into one of those tumbleweeds you see in westerns. The suction of the air 
caused him to roll over and over and over as he climbed the tunnel. When he reached the top, he could see the light. There was like a little extra bit of tunnel. He could see the light at the top of it. But there was a gate. And he tried the gate, tried pushing it. It wouldn't go. So, I don't have the energy for this. I'm not interested in solving this puzzle. Why will the gate not open? And the answer actually was not to push and push and push and push and push, but to just open it outwards. It just opened this way. So he started walking up this last stretch of tunnel. And as he did so, darts flew out from either side like of the wall and stuck in the opposite wall. But like, bam, 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 bam. And each dart had a woolen type thread, a piece of twine attached to it. Shang, shang, a bit like Indiana Jones. Shang, 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 like that. Until there was this matrix of threads across the tunnel floor. Issues, 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 issues. To trip him up, to remind him of where he'd been, of things he had to shed. Making the road harder. He got his feet tangled in these threads. And he tripped and he was struggling. Because more of these darts were going backwards and forwards. Sting, 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 sting. Backwards and forwards. And in the end, it was like he was wrapped in this twine. He couldn't even reach the top. There was no energy left. There was no room for maneuver. He was in a straitjacket of twine. He goes, I can't make it. I can't do this on my own. It's at times like that when we're brought to our knees. When we're at rock bottom and disempowered. When we can't go any further under our own steam. It's at times like that when grace steps in. It's when miracles happen, actually. It's like the universe is waiting for us to stop fighting and stop struggling and just say, I surrender to you. What do you want me to do? And in this instance, giant ethereal hands reached out and began unpicking the threads. Come on. Come on, let's just help you. It'll be fine. We'll deal with this later. Then they lifted him up with a level of tenderness and love that he'd never known. And he was carried into this symbolic dome I always see, the dome of light. It's very bright, actually. He was carried into it. Taken to safety. The takeaway for me from this was learning that it doesn't have to hurt. That we are responsible many times for how we respond to events that happen around us. We blame other people. We try to hold them responsible for what you did to me. And I guess that's what he did. He felt like a victim. But truthfully, he did a lot of it to himself. It's all about where you put your attention. If you think the world is a bad place and you put out that thought, then the energy behind that thought will drag into your experience more of the same, more reasons to think the world is a bad place. As I said before, we are the architects of our own undoing. The burden he'd taken upon himself was too great. Even though he only lived to 37, those were 37 tumultuous, turmoil-filled years that led to his suicide. doesn't have to hurt. 
we don't have to suffer. It's a choice. That's what I take away from that. And that's it. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe, like, share, whatever you can do. Follow me on Twitter, at Cash Peters. That'd be nice too. Otherwise, I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.